peaches and welcome to today's video. If you haven't noticed, the past four videos have been me reacting to Interior Design Masters. Now, the show has eight episodes, so I figure we'll take a little intermission and change it up for a few weeks, and then we can watch the rest of the season. So today, we are changing it up. We are going to be watching a bunch of home decor TikTok trends, and I'm going to react for you. I like to give a special thanks to my subscriber Froggy who actually left this idea in a comment on one of my previous videos and I thought it was such a brilliant idea. I've seen a lot of people react to trends on TikTok or DIY and recreate different projects but I haven't seen so many reactions to the trends and sharing my opinion I thought would be fun. With that said, let's see the first video. She's a Mona Lisa. Everyone's lining up to see her. She's a Mona Lisa. Everyone's lining up to see her. So the first trend we're going to talk about is these foam mirrors. Now I think that on one side they're really cool to have like a custom mirror to DIY. You can do it for very affordably, so I like that. I don't know if I love the style. Um, I don't, maybe that's just a personal choice. It looks a little incomplete to me, but at the same time, do I think that Urban Outfitters would sell something like this? Yes. So I could see why it's trendy, but I just don't think that this is like a timeless piece. It's not something that I want forever. I can see it being over in a few months. With that, I'm going to rate it a 6 out of 10. There must be something bad features. you find the beauty goes much deeper. Once you get to meet her. So on the same note, the second trend we're going to talk about is cloud mirrors. It's the same concept except instead of using installation foam, you're using polyfill. So I like this idea as well and I think it's really cute if you have a room that is galaxy themed or like sky themed or like something where it makes sense. I like that it's customizable, but same thing with the last mirror. I don't think it ages very well, and I think that it's going to go out of style very soon. I like that it's cost effective. I like that it's DIY friendly, but I don't love the style, and it just doesn't look complete as well. It kind of... It's a good thought, but not my favorite thing out there. So I've seen a lot of these on TikTok, but this particular one has lights in it. I do like that it lights up, but it's a mirror, so it kind of is counterintuitive where you're looking at yourself with the lights off. So that doesn't really add up to me. Also, the cloud is very fluffy, but then you just have a straight line of lights. So I feel like twinkle lights would be better for this so that they're kind of twinkling throughout instead of just a strict LED light. So with this one, I'm gonna rate it a six out of 10 as well. same polyfill trend number three is cloud ceilings or walls I personally am more of a fan of cloud ceilings seeing that clouds are in the sky and not on the walls but I think that this is again really cool if you have a galaxy or a space or a like naturey type of room again I don't think that you should apply it in every single space like that's the problem with trends is that everybody starts to do it but it doesn't make sense for every room. Like I feel like it would be better if we all just had our own style and did things that made sense for our style instead of just doing things because they're popular. But as far as this goes, I do think it's really cool on the ceilings. I think that a textured wall or a ceiling is, a, is always a great idea. However, I don't know if you know this, but the polyfill on the walls or on your ceiling are great homes for spider nests. I don't want spider nests in anywhere in my house, let alone my room or like by where I'm sleeping. So with that, it makes me really not like it at all. Ew. As far as his goes with the thunder and lightning look, I think that's really cool. How he placed his lights were very strategic. Again, I don't think that the straight like lines of LED work well for this, but if you wanted to go with what he was doing, I think it's really cool. I'll rate this one a 7 out of 10, just because he did it like so 
cool and it looks really real but not all of these TikToks are done as well you really have to like load up the polyfill and spray it for insects I guess I don't know how you avoid the spiders but for that reason alone I'm gonna skip out on this trend no, she's a Mona Lisa Everyone's lining up to see her There must be something that features so, Trend number four is neon lights and these, these LED lights. Now I think they're very cool to customize and you have your little remote and you can really set the mood for the room. I think they're really cool. They definitely scream high schooler to me which makes sense seeing that most of tiktok users are in high school or around that age i think for a certain age range and a certain like look that you're going for i think it makes sense however i don't like how it's a trend to just like put them directly on your wall these lights were intended to be focal lights where you are enhancing one area and calling attention to one area. So for example, in my brother's room, I use them underneath his desk and behind his bed or behind a TV. That's kind of one of the things we saw on TikTok in the early stages. That's what they're meant for, to backlight something or to subtly light something. People are taking it to a new level where they're just covering every wall in their space and that part I am not a fan of. I think if you want to put them under your bed or like hidden to light from underneath, that looks amazing and I would rate it an 8 out of 10 for the right rooms and the right spaces. As for covering your entire ceiling with them and using them every single place you can that i'm gonna rate like a five out of ten you have to stop putting led lights in the corners of your ceiling your room looks like a frat house put them under your bed frame she's a mona lisa everyone's lining up to see her there must be something that features you find the beauty goes now with this room here there is so many trends all in this one room right here so first off she obviously has the led strip lights around her ceiling then she has the cds on her door which has been more popular she has this like moon chain which i've seen a lot of people at DIY that one I do love I think it's really fun I my problem with these trends is that once everybody has them they're not special anymore like this before was a trend 10 out of 10 now it's just everybody has it so it's lost its uniqueness but I still love that the discs I think that there are a lot of DIYs that you can do with the discs that are really cute just taking CDs and like placing them on your wall I think is a little sloppy and just I'm just hanging something on the wall to hang it but if you are hanging like Cheetah Girls albums with Hilary Duff and like nostalgic and you're putting CDs up from your childhood or have meaning to you or remind you of a trip or something like that I like that it's like a little memorabilia wall so I'm a fan of that I just think it has to have meaning. Also, hate to be the bearer of bad news, but the kids putting these up never actually listen to CDs. Like, all they've ever known is Pandora, Spotify, YouTube. So it loses its, its authenticity because, like, for me, I listen to CDs. So if I put a CD up, it would be of something I listened to when I was a child. But these Gen Zers putting CDs up, you never listen to CDs. So you're just doing it to be cool and like, it doesn't feel right to me, you know? It just doesn't feel right. That one I'm going to rate a 5 out of 10. Because especially seeing that the people who are doing this are usually in the Gen Z age range, if you actually had meaning to it, maybe I would give it like a 7 to have that nostalgic side of it. But I don't know. We're just, we got to do things that make sense to us, you know?
There's also the twinkle lights, which I prefer the twinkle lights to the LED lights, which are not as trendy anymore, but they definitely had their time and they were kind of replaced with LED lights. But I just feel like that the twinkly lights are a little more magical. They kind of give me the Christmas feeling, you know, when your trees lit up and you're like at night listening to like Christmas music. I get that same feeling from twinkle lights. Again, don't just stick them with tacks on your wall. Be a little more creative. They're the same thing. They're supposed to be focal lights, so put them behind a curtain. There's lots of fun ways to use twinkle lights. I feel like those have a little bit more longevity just because they have that little magical sense to them, whereas LED lights I feel like don't have that. So I'm going to give twinkle lights a 7 out of 10. And then she also has these vines. It goes much deeper once you get to meet her. She's a Mona Lisa. Everyone's lining up to see her. These vines are everywhere. And as you saw in this video, a lot of people will just literally hang them straight vertically in a line across their wall. And to me, that's not very creative. I also think that these particular vines that are so trendy look very plasticky. I am obviously a huge fan of faux plants, however there's a big range of quality of faux plants and I think that it's very important to get good quality ones. So this same concept using a eucalyptus strand that looks like really real would be a totally different vibe but because these ones that are trendy are so plasticky looking that really hurts its score for me now also just hanging them straight up vines don't grow that way again there's no logic behind it it's literally just tacked to your wall so that in itself i'm giving a four out of ten but i really like it done this way there must be something bad I see they don't understand feeling like Picasso so here you can see they added a lot more vines and they also created a shape with the vines and to me that says they're putting a lot more intention behind it and I think that that's cool again I would love the quality to be better but this angular triangle that they're making that's really cool so this I'll give a 6 out of 10 but look at this she brushing against my hands seeing you from around the way you didn't give me the time of day you be making moves that you who really care what Simon say okay wow so she really like hangs it on the ceiling and the walls and mismatch all over the place that's how vines grow like that makes sense if you were outside this is what you would see and she adds like the t cloud wall to it and then this wing thing that she's doing with these faux plants is beautiful so this i'll give a 9 out of 10. i think that's really cool i don't think that this should be done in every single room but for her bohemian nature inspired room this makes perfect sense and she executes it so well so if you're gonna do it i would do it like that all right, so going back to the mirrors for a second, I wanted to include this while we're talking about vines and nature because this is really cool. That yeah, who really care what Simon say? All the bad things, girl, I had to look past that. Call you sick a dime, I'm just trying to get my cash back. You be looking fine, so no wonder they can't match that. Louis V scarf, oh, I'm chilling with a dad. Whoa, slow it down like that. Just hold me down like that. Okay, so obviously she's covering a mirror and she's using faux moss that you can get at like Michael's and she's adding some flowers and this one I think looks really, really cool. This is my favorite DIY mirror that I've seen done. I just think that it's done well. It doesn't look cheap or fake. It, it just executed really, really well. This I'm going to give a 9 out of 10. While we're on the nature aspect, let's talk about flower walls. She's a Mona Lisa Everyone's lining up to see so there's lots of ways to do flower walls, but this I thought was a really good way. Basically, they are just taking a pegboard and they're, they're taking the bases of the flowers and just sticking them into the peg holes. So genius idea. I actually really like how this turned out. This I think can go a lot of ways. First off, 
if you're buying your flowers from the Dollar Tree, the chance of them being super high quality is not the highest. So I think that you really need to use good faux flowers if you're going to do this, especially if you plan to keep it for a long time because why go through all of this effort just for it to look mediocre? I also think that you should have a clear color palette and specific types of flowers keeps the balance and keeps it looking cohesive. And I also think that the more you can make it look almost like a bouquet and add different types of flowers, add greenery with your roses, with your baby's breath, you know, then it looks a lot more realistic and has a lot of different dimensions. And I think that that's the best way to go about it. But the overall concept I do really like. I think that this is great in the glam style home or in a girly feminine room. I think you can do it depending on the colors that you pick. You can make it more neutral and earthy. So I like that it can be done in so many ways and it's fully customizable. So with that, I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10. But I also wanted to share this way you can do it as well. pegboard they used these flower mats which I believe you can order I don't I haven't really looked into too much but I'm sure you can order different mats of different colors different flowers I think it's a little bit less customizable but probably a little bit more cost effective and a little bit quicker so this is another option and look at how amazing this wall turned out I think that this DIY and concept overall is really fun for walls but also for like making boards for baby showers or weddings and you know backdrops for different things the only downside to this is that it collects a lot of dust and is not the easiest to clean and i don't think it's super inexpensive to do because fake flowers are pretty pricey i do really like how it turns out and i would definitely use this for a party i was planning or for specific types of bedrooms i was designing while we're on the topic of flowers, let's take a look at this one. So clearly I love nostalgic things, memorabilia. I have a habit of hoarding memorabilia, so I am a fan of this. I personally really love dried foliage. Everything from eucalyptus to roses to baby's breath and I use it in my own house And I think that it's a really amazing way to Have the feel of nature and flowers without having to water plants or having really plasticky looking fake flowers So I really love dried foliage and I really love for this specific trend of taking roses from your first date or from homecoming or from your wedding and storing them in some way. There's lots of ways to do this, but I feel like the most common is to put them into a jar. I've also seen like the larger jars, like with a whole flower display. I love that. I'll probably use that in my own space. So this one, I'm gonna rate a 10 out of 10 for the look, but also the nostalgic side of it. So cute, okay. On the same keepsake era, look at this one. Everyone's not enough to see her. She's a Mona Lisa. This is such a cute idea. I love pressed flowers. I love the dried foliage. I love the keepsake aspect. So to take little flowers and press them in a book, or you can also order pressed flowers and put them in a clear frame or really using them anyway, but this specific idea is so cute. I love it, 10 out of 10. We'll be trying this out myself. You'll find the beauty goes much deeper Once you get to meet her You see her walking down the boulevard She got the posture of a superstar She looks so fly in those Gucci So now we have the infamous tile table. And I love it. I love it so much. I think it's so cute. I love the texture. It's so like unique and you can paint it any color. You can get any size table. It's easy enough that anybody can do it. You can 
literally make this for so inexpensive. Personally, I think it would be better to use a table you already have with, instead of going out and buying something or like using some wood and constructing your own table because you literally only need a tabletop and two legs and so I feel like it's more cost effective that way. But I love this look, 10 out of 10, want to put this in my own house. I love it, it's amazing. So, what's under this side of smile? She's a Mona Lisa Everyone's lining up to see her There must be something that her features You'll find her beauty goes much deeper Once you get to meet her She's a Mona Lisa Everyone's lining up to see her There must be something that her features You'll find her beauty goes much deeper Next up, we have the picture walls. So there's lots of ways you can do them. As you saw in one of the other videos, they had like printout photos with lots of space in between. You can put your Polaroids into a Polaroid wall. And then there's something like the one we just watched. I love and hate it, okay? One, I think that if you do it right, it can be amazing. Like obviously we all have seen the Teza collage kits. They're beautiful, they're amazing, of course. This one we just saw, cool, really cool. I personally think that if you can get eight by 10s, obviously they're a little more expensive. The reason that Tezza's look so amazing, one is because she picks specific colors and she has a full color palette telling a clear story throughout her whole collage. And on top of the fact, she uses really good quality paper and she has bigger images. So that obviously is a little more costy, but I think it gives you a better result. This that they did here, I think that they just used 4x6s, which is a lot cheaper. Shutterfly offers like 100 4x6s for free. So if you want this look, I would definitely check Shutterfly out. She did a great job telling a story, picking a color palette, and all of her photos kind of give you the same vibe. I think that if you're going to do this, you definitely need to keep that in mind when picking photos. I think it can very easily get scattered overwhelmed. I also think that it's better to keep this on a smaller wall. So instead of doing like your main headboard like this, doing it in a more concise area or on a door or something, just because it's so much to look at that you don't want so much overwhelming you, you know? I really like that you can do it with whatever you're interested in. You can literally make it so personal, so I love that side of it. And also you can put pictures of your friends or people that inspire you or like literally anything. So I love that side of it. I just think that it has to make sense and not go overboard because it can easily become very distracting and a mod podge of I don't know what's going on. So I'm going to give this a... 9 out of 10. Alright, that mirror I think is cool. Again, this is one of those things that have kind of been done so many times that it's no longer original. But I do really like how it looks. I think it works in like a modern house, in a mid-century home. It can work in different spaces. I do really like it. I think that you can do it really inexpensively. The only downside to the video I just showed you is that it requires power tools and isn't accessible to everyone. So take a look at this one. Let me paint a picture. I see they don't understand. Feeling like Picasso. It gives you pretty much the same result. It looks a little bit more user friendly, a little bit easier to do, a little bit more cost effective. And I, I really like the results. So this I'm going to give a 8 out of 10. Slow it down like that. Just hold me down like that. She's a Everyone now has a clothing rack. And I have a love-hate relationship with this because, one, I understand a lot of houses don't have enough storage, especially for our ever-growing closets, so I get that we need more storage, and I think that this is a good way to utilize space, and it, ta it, you know, it takes up a big wall while also having a place to store things. So I like that aspect of it. 
Again, it can be done really well or really poorly. An exposed clothing rack should not be a place to shove in every nook and cranny, to pile things on, no, no. If you're gonna have an exposed clothing rack, it needs to be intentional and clean. Pick out seven things you're gonna wear in a week or pick out some of your new spring favorite items that you just got or colors that inspire you that make you wanna dress up for spring. I think that that makes sense. Have a color story. Be intentional. Don't have sweatpants, but also sundresses. If you're gonna do sweats and, and like leisure wear, do that. If you're gonna do dressy, flowery, girly, do that. Just like anything in design, you wanna have a clear color story. You wanna have a clear theme story in general. Use your purses, your shoes, your clothes, your hats, accessories as decor, not as storage you know it, it is you're still storing your things but think of each piece that you're putting on it as decor and how it's helping to cultivate the feeling in the room rather than just anything goes so with that said I'm gonna give this a 7 out of 10 against my hands seeing you from around the way you didn't give me the time of day you be making moves that you who really care what Simon say all the bad things girl I had to look past that call yourself a dime I'm just trying to get my cash back you be looking fine so no wonder they can't match that Louis V scarf for I'm chilling with a dad whoa slow it down like that just hold me down would this even be a TikTok trend video if we didn't talk about the Alex drawers so everybody has these Alex drawers one of the reasons that I have a problem with some of the Ikea things is the fact that everybody has it. If you guys watched my Ikea video, then you know that there's some pieces there that I absolutely love and other pieces I think are either not the best quality or are a little too overplayed and too many people have them. With that said, I do really love the practicality of the Alex dresser. I like that there's so many drawers. I think it's great for organization. I wish that there was another option on the market so that people could not all have the same thing. Because right now, realistically, if you want a dresser meant for organization, your only option is the Alex drawer. And it comes in like, I think, three or four sizes. So it makes sense. And with that logic, I would buy an Alex drawer too. However, I hate that it's in every single house. So with that, I'm going to give it a 6 out of 10, I think. But with that said, you can customize your Alex drawers. So if you are someone who's like, I need storage, I have so much makeup, something like that, buy the Alex drawer, amazing. But customize it, take some contact paper, put it to the front of it, paint it, put some holes in it and put some new knobs on it. For freak's sake, use glue and put knobs on it if you don't wanna use a drill. I mean, there's so many ways. Do the tile thing that we were talking about. Literally put some tiles on the Alex drawer. Like there's so many ways to customize it. So I think that for that, it's amazing. So with that, I think it's a 10. Like it has storage functionality and expensive and you can customize it, but as is not my favorite. Speaking of contact paper, there's this. Enough to see you say, love this idea okay first off i understand when you have a fridge or a dishwasher or any appliance that's just looking a little outdated what an ingenious idea not having to go out and buy a new fridge not having to go out and buy a new dishwasher that's so annoying and costs so much money this is a genius hack now i've also seen a lot of these slow it down like that just hold me down like that so I really do like how the contact paper looks. A lot of people are using a marble to do their countertops. The only downside is that one, I don't know if it's knife proof because I've never used it on a countertop, but it's plastic and very thin material. Like it's like a vinyl. So a knife could definitely cut through that. So you definitely have to make sure you're using a cutting board and nothing too sharp, like no sharp glasses or anything on top of that waterproof it is a plastic material so it seems like it would be relatively easy to clean however 
like what about the edges like if it's by a sink and water got underneath it i feel like it would take all the stickiness away so that would be a concern or like if a crumb got underneath it somehow that would kind of mess up the look and then the third aspect is heat resistance it's plastic so to me it that seems like it would melt. From what I understand, some contact paper, not all, I, th I think it's different depending on the brand, but some contact paper is heat resistant, but only up to like 170 degrees. So if you took a pan out of the oven, you could not put it on your counter. You'd have to have a rack. Um, there's just like a lot of things to think about. Even if you took it out of the microwave, I don't know like how hot your bowl would be, but just to me, that concept of the plastic melting so easily makes me not want to put it in my kitchen because it can cut with knives. I don't know how waterproof it is and heat and like that's what all of those things I'm doing a lot in the kitchen. So I don't love that idea, but I do really love how it looks. With that said, doing contact paper to cover a countertop in a bathroom love that idea right I mean obviously there's still water involved but the other elements are not as big of a deal so I would just make sure that I like didn't shower in that bathroom for like two days to make sure it was really dry and really clean the surfaces and I think that you'd be probably good to go there I just wonder about the durability but I think that it's a really cost-effective way to get a better looking countertop so I would definitely use that in my own space not in my own kitchen though. In terms of using contact paper on other surfaces, I love it. I think it looks really good if you can do it well. I unfortunately am not the best at doing it because I always get air bubbles. Like how do you not get air bubbles? Anyways, contact paper, I am going to rate a eight out of 10 simply because the look that it gives is just so good. The reason it doesn't get a 10 out of 10 is because the durability scares me. hundred percent I love it okay this is taking plastic yucky looking bottles and making them look beautiful and using your like things that you have as decor instead of having to hide it all instead of having to conceal it this is a pretty way to showcase it and it's easily accessible I also think it's better for the environment to buy from Costco or like buy in bulk a big large sum and keep those big bottles in your garage and then just have on your shelf like a month worth or like a smaller supply. Think it's genius, think it's beautiful, and I love it. And the last one we're gonna talk about today is this guy. Hey, whoa. Slow it down like that. Just hold me down like that. Yeah. Hold on. Let's do a quick little experiment, okay? Have you personally been influenced? by TikTok or some social media platform to purchase one of these. In the comments, if you've purchased one of these personally, leave a comment that says Galaxy or put the Galaxy emoji. And if you know someone who's purchased one of these, then write friend or put a friend emoji and tag them because literally so many people have this because I have. Okay, I bought one of these for my brother. I designed his room. He had a galaxy themed room. So of course I need a galaxy projector and I put it in his room and I loved it so much that I bought one for myself. However, in my room, it just wasn't as cool. His room made sense. It was galaxy themed. We had galaxy everywhere. So it like really brought the space together. My room didn't go at all sat out on my nightstand, took up a big like amount of my nightstand, it was a pretty bulky, a little bit of an eyesore, didn't love looking at it, and something about it just didn't, didn't do it for me in my own space. But this is one of those things that I think it's really fun, I think everybody should experience. So this one, I'm gonna give 
It's so not fair though. I'm, I'm not gonna write this one because I think it's really cool. It's really not about decorating your house. It's more about the experience and I understand that. All right guys, that was today's video. I have a bunch of home renovation TikToks that I've seen. So if you guys wanna see a part two where instead of talking about decor, I talk about different DIYs or like home trends that I've seen on TikTok, then I would love to do that. This was a very, very fun video to film, and I hope you guys had as much fun watching it. Leave in the comments which trends you have taken part of or that you like and which ones you think need to be left and we need to forget about and move forward with something new and fresh. I just wanna say that trends are really cool. I'm so happy that we're able to inspire each other, but I will always and forever promote uniqueness and design and your home and your space should really be focused on what makes you happy on what you like and instead of buying things because you saw it on TikTok and that's what's trending I think you should do it because you really love it and because it's like shows your personality and what you like so with that said if you like this video don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and hit subscribe down below to see more of me also, don't forget to turn on that bell icon to get notified when part two comes out of TikTok trends. As always, thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye! It goes much deeper once you get to meet her. She's a Mona Lisa.